Hello everyone, this video will show you how to effectively use the SenseCap T1000. The video will cover the following topics. First part, basic configuration. Help you hands-on quickly know the basic concept and check the tracker's location. Second part, advanced configuration. This will help you use most of the tracker's advanced features. Third part, product tips. I'll introduce the LED indicator button and buzzer and explain the user experience with the charging cable as well as how to update the software. Last part, troubleshooting. We'll discuss common issues like not being able to get a location, the device going offline, and how to force a restart. For this demonstration, I will use the SenseCap T1000A as an example. This model comes with built-in temperature, night, and motion sensors. SenseCap T1000 basic configuration. Before getting started, please make sure you have coverage from a LoRaWAN network such as Helium, TTN, or other LoRaWAN networks. Without LoRaWAN network coverage, the device cannot send data to the cloud. The easiest way to use a tracker is with the SenseCap LoRaWAN gateway and the SenseCap Mate app. Let's start by downloading the app. You can do this by scanning the QR code. Once downloaded, open the app and grant permissions for Bluetooth and Internet access. Select the global server. Next, register using your email. I already have an account, so I just log in. On the device page, you will see all the devices linked to your account. You can also register new device here. By tapping on the user, you can configure devices via Bluetooth or modify other settings. To begin with, let's register a new device. Tap the Add Device icon and scan the QR code on the device. Name your device as desired, confirm, and the tracker should now be added to your account. The next step is to configure the device to ensure it operates correctly. You can configure it now or later. Here, I will choose Configure Now. Now, power on the tracker by pressing and holding the button for 3 seconds. Wait until the LED blinks with a boot-up ring, which means the tracker is ready to pair with your phone. Tap to continue, select the SN number popped up. You can opt for either quick or advanced configuration. The quick mode automatically sets the correct frequency pan based on your phone's location. For example, if you are in the United States, the frequency pan will default to US915. Adjust the uplink interval as desired. The default interval is 60 minutes, and the shortest interval is 1 minute. Once you have made your selections, tap configuration to take effect on the settings, and the device will initiate join the LoRaWAN network. Now, you can see the green LED in a breathing pattern. Once you hear the buzzer and see the LED flash rapidly, the tracker has successfully joined the network. Now, select the tracker you just added. You can view the current device location and battery level. Additionally, you can review the history data here. Tap back. By pressing the bell icon to play sound on the tracker, the tracker will ring and the next turn when it wakes up for its scheduled uplink. Tap the setting icon on the top upper right. You can also send downlink commands to the device to adjust the uplink interval. Reboot the tracker or check the device's status. Additionally, you can see how many days are left on your subscription for the device to use the SenseCap Cloud service. And of course, you can purchase more days here. SenseCap T1 saw an advanced configuration. If you want to use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth positioning for indoor tracking, or you wish to enable the temperature and light sensor on your tracker, I'll guide you through the advanced configuration process. Tap on User, then tap on Device Bluetooth Configuration, and select the Tracker T1000. Tap Setup, and select Advanced Configuration. To enter pairing mode, press and hold the button for 3 seconds until the LED starts to blink. In the app, select the Tracker, and you will be able to see the basic device information, such as UI, hardware and software versions, working mode, and battery level. If you scroll down to the measurement section, you can tap to view the current temperature and light sensor readings, like this. Next, navigate to the setting page. 
The print form indicates which LoRaWAN server you intend to use. Generally, there are the Syscap Cloud and other LoRaWAN server providers. All the Syscap tracker are pre-configured to connect with Syscap's the Sense network and uh, Helium LoRaWAN servers before shipping. This means you won't need to manually enter UIs and keys to connect them to the server. If you prefer to use a different LoRaWAN server or your own private LoRaWAN server, you have options such as Helium, the Sense network, and others. If I select the Sense network, you can copy the tracker's WUI, app UI, and app case to register the tracker on your preferred LoRaWAN server, and you have the flexibility to modify those parameters if necessary. For this demonstration, I will be using SenseCap for the Sense network. You also have the options to adjust the frequency pan. Here, I will select U868. Lastly, ensure that the LoRaWAN ADR adaptive data rate is enabled for optimized battery performance. Next, type on work mode. If the tracker hasn't sent the periodic uplink data to the server for a long time, the tracker will send a heartbeat package to the server indicating it's actively working. By default, the interval is set to 720 minutes or 12 hours. If you wish to utilize the built-in temperature and light sensors, enable them here. Note that the light sensor measures in percentage ranging from zero, no light, to 100% high night. The temperature sensor is located underneath the enclosure and measures the tracker's ambient temperature. So be aware that if the tracker is exposed to direct sunlight, the measured temperature might be higher than the actual air temperature due to the accumulated heat. Next, the SOS report mode. When you double-click the SOS button on the device, it triggers an alarm. At this point, the device's buzzer will ring and immediately send an alarm signal to the server. There are two options here, single alarm and continuous alarm. A single alarm will ring only once, while the continuous alarm will keep in ringing and sending alarm signals for another 30 minutes. You can double-click the button to stop the alarm. Next. The work mode. There are three modes. When working in standby mode, the device will not perform positioning or connecting sensor data. It remains in a deep sleep to save the battery and only send a heartbeat packet at its interval. In periodic mode, the device will normally work according to the uplink interval and send the data to the server, then go into sleep mode. Lastly, the event mode. This mode allows your device to adjust its data upload behavior based on specific event states. You can enable one or more triggered conditions such as uploading data when the temperature exceeds 30 Celsius degree. You can adjust the sampling cycle and the data uplink interval when the trigger condition are met, such as every one minute. When no events are triggered, but you still want the tracker to upload data at a certain interval, you can set this using the uplink interval when no event option. Here, I'll demonstrate using the most common periodic mode and set the uplink interval to 5 minutes. Lastly, let's talk about the positioning methods. Type on the geolocation. The tracker supports GNSS, commonly known as GPS. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as its three positioning methods. GNSS get location directly through the satellite signals and figure out the latitude and longitude, then display the location on the map. Wi-Fi positioning involves the trackers leaving nearby Wi-Fi hotspot MAC addresses and sending them to the server. The server then looks up a backend database to determine the location. Bluetooth positioning works in a similar manner where the trackers leave the MAC addresses of Bluetooth beacons deployed in specific areas, and then check the indoor positioning database to determine the tracker's location. Within the app, GPS directly displays the location on a map, while Wi-Fi Bluetooth only displays the MAC addresses on a separate page. The geolocation strategy option 
offers multiple combination methods for positioning. The GNSS awning allows the tracker to only try the satellite positioning. The GNSS plus Wi-Fi first tries the GNSS and if unsuccessful, it immediately switches to Wi-Fi positioning by selecting the strongest nearby Wi-Fi hotspot. The approach for the following strategies is the same. The tracker will try the primary positioning method and if unsuccessful, it will try the next one. Once a positioning method succeeds, it will immediately upload the obtained location information to the server and stop try the rest methods. Now, I will select the GNSS plus Wi-Fi. The GNSS timeout is the duration that the device will try to get the satellite signal, especially in cases when the signal is weak or the device is indoors and cannot obtain satellite positioning. This duration indicates how long it will try before giving up and sending the failed satellite positioning result to the server. By default, it's 60 seconds. However, the longer the duration, the more battery it consumes. And let's talk about the GNS data cache. If the GNSS data cache is enabled and the tracker successfully obtained a GPS position but cannot upload the data to the server due to lack of LoRaWAN network coverage, the tracker will store this record in device. Once the tracker moves to an area with network coverage, it will then upload each record to the server, making it possible to trace the historical location and sensor data. Here, I will enable the location cache. Alright, now we have finished all the advanced settings required for this demonstration. I will click Send to transmit the configuration to the device to take effect. Click back to home to disconnect the Bluetooth connection between the phone and the device. The device will then restart, rejoin the network, and begin its normal operation. Now, let's return to the device. When the device is outdoors, you can see its position on the map as well as the current temperature and the night sensor values. When the device is indoors, you will notice that the device can only obtain the Wi-Fi Mac information. Additionally, it's worth mentioning that when operating in GNSS only mode and unable to acquire a satellite position, you can view records here to indicate a GNS search timeout. Since CAPT-1000 product tips. During the normal operation of the tracker, if you need it immediately send a location update to the server, please press the button once. The LED will flash once, indicating it's beginning to acquire and upload location information. Once a server successfully receives this data, the tracker's buzzer will sound. To have the tracker rejoin the network, press and hold the button for 3 seconds until the LED starts to flash. Similar to when it's waiting to connect a phone, then simply click the button once and the tracker will reboot and try to join the network. Double-clicking the button will trigger an SOS alarm. Double-clicking again will stop the SOS alert. Holding the button for more than 9 seconds will turn off the device. To turn it back on, press and hold the button for another 3 seconds. Once turned on, the device will automatically enter a state waiting for a Bluetooth connection for a phone with the LED flashes. If there is a new firmware release for the tracker, navigate to the user page in the app, tap Device Bluetooth Configuration, choose Tracker, and select Update. Same as before, press and hold the button for 3 seconds to allow the device to be paired with the phone. Here, you will notice the new firmware version. Click Get Updates and Confirm. After waiting for a few moments, the device will begin updating. Once finished the update, you will hear a confirmation sound from the device. The tracker has a built-in rechargeable battery. If set to an uplink every one hour, the battery can last for several months. If set to uplink every 5 minutes, it can still last over 1 month. 
If the battery runs out, charging it using the original magnetic charging cable provided. Plug the other end of the charging cable into a 5V USB power adapter. The LED will flash while charging and it will stay on once fully charged. In addition to the mobile app, you can also access more advanced features on the web portal. You can log in with the same account in the data table. You can view and export historic data. You can also generate API tokens for integration development. Additionally, you can view tracker information on the sensor node page and select the tracker. Here, if your tracker's subscription is about to expire, you can also purchase more cloud platform usage days here. SenseCap T1000 Troubleshooting If the tracker cannot obtain a GPS location, you should first place the tracker in an open outdoor environment. Also, check if the tracker's positioning strategy has GNSS, such as GNSS only or GNSS plus Wi-Fi. If your tracker fails to join the LoRaWAN network indicated by the LED fading after bracing without a successful confirmation sound from the buzzer, it means that attempt to join the network failed. The device will continue to try join the network a few more times. If it still cannot join, there may be no NoRaWAN network coverage in your areas or the server platform configuration for the tracker in the app might be incorrect. If you are using the SenseCap gateway, select the SenseCap for the Sense network. If you choose a public lower one server such as the Sense network and forgot to register the device UIs and the case on that server, the device will not able to join the network for sure. The device has an online status visible on the device page if no new data has been received for three uplink interval periods, the server will consider the device to be in a location without good LoRaWAN network coverage and mark it offline. The status will change back to online when new data is uploaded. If the device is unresponsive and the LED doesn't turn on after pressing the button, first charging the tracker and if the LED starts to blink, that means the tracker's battery just dead. Please wait for it being fully charged. If the device has enough battery and the LED stays on even without the charging cable plugged in and the button is unresponsive, you can force a restart. To do this, press and hold the button first and attach the magnetic charging cable, then release the button. You will then see the device restart and attempt to join the network again. That concludes the main content of this video. If there are any updates not covered in this video, please visit the tracker's documentation page for more detailed information and updates. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.